We're still at the Duga, so that massive Soviet over-the-horizon radar I climbed in my last video. But this time, let's proceed to the control room and the computer rooms of the Duga array. So we're just gonna walk past the Duga antenna and just making our way towards the administrative building and then towards the control rooms. So let's have a look inside of that administrative building. You can see quite weird floors. I don't know why they build them like that, but let's check out what they have here. I don't know what that is, but it looks a bit like one of these telephone switchboards, you know, back then when a person would actually have to sit there and connect you to the other side. Oh. For armor with aluminium case. Mm -hmm. Looks like some kind of office room. Quite cozy actually. Like a youth hostel, maybe if you'd clean up a bit. Not all that interesting anyway, so let's move on to the main building, which would house the control room and the computer rooms. And you can see quite a lot of electronic equipment just scattered around outside already. Big capacitors, circuit boards, these old tube monitors, uh, electromagnetic tape. I suppose that was part of a hard disk or something. Wow. Yeah, it feels cold, that's true. Yeah, outside it was about plus 10 Celsius and inside it was freezing at minus 5 Celsius or something. Not that much left of it, sadly. Old uh, hard disk. Oh shit, yeah, with tape inside. Yes. <laughs> All of that equipment in this room was part of like a big supercomputer at the time, which would control the Duga array. Quite amazing. Just too bad so few of it is left. I have no clue what type of plug that is. If any of you knows, again, that will be interesting to know. But moving along, we can see there's a lot of electronic stuff in that corner. If they left all this, I wonder what were the valuables that they actually took. And you can see my breath in that ice cold air. Time for a little squeeze. It's amazing to imagine how this entire room was full of computer equipment, like a big server room nowadays. And this was a top secret project for a long time. I mean, of course it could be heard all around the globe, but nobody knew exactly where it was coming from for a long time. Caution, something, I suppose high voltage, I don't know. Yes. My comrade was indicating that he had found something. Smoke detector. Oh, plutonium. Yes. <laughs> A smoke detector containing plutonium. Oh, yes, you can. 
It's an ionization smoke detector, which works just like the ones used nowadays, which contain americium-241, just in case you want to look that up. Here's a closer look at another one I found in Chernobyl. You can see that golden capsule, and uh, just on there, on that brownish-gray layer, there's the plutonium for the smoke detector. The roof must be covered with ice that is melting now or something. Oh, where do you think the water is coming from? As it still gets very cold at night, like below freezing point, I suppose the sun is indeed melting the snow on the roof and the water is coming inside and as it's very cold inside, it's just turning into ice again. Hmm, could make a nice cocktail. Crushed ice. Let's move on and see what's inside the other rooms. <coughs> well, you can smell the fungus in the air. Seems like this used to be some kind of storage room. And over here in that shelf, yet another of these crude memory modules, as well as another circuit board. No idea what it was used for, but this is apparently a memory module. Quite cool. Transistors? Maybe a macroscopic CPU? I don't know. I'm too young to know all this, I guess. Weird floor. I wonder if it had cables running through it, or what the purpose of that gap was. Thirty-three percent. Eighty-four. No. Oh, yes, yeah, smoke detector. Ah. <laughs> it's a lot. Yes. Well. Lots of plutonium scattered all around, but nevertheless, let's just move on. I like these creepy dark hallways. Imagine the people who worked here, the responsibility they had. Early launch detection of nuclear bombs, and if you do detect them, prepare to counter-strike. The end of the world as we know it. it. Looks like packaging for those hard disk tapes. Some parts still in packaging. But it's just a plug. Or something, but still in packing. Oh, old matches. Oh, punch card program. Secret program for Dugas. Yes. <laughs> Written in 1980, it says there on the left side. This is the software for the Duga array. How wicked. Now everything changed. But in that time it was it was fantastic. Yes. Now going to some friends and guys. A brand new American movie. <laughs> you want to punch it? <laughs> wow! <laughs> yeah, it was this device for uh, this perfect card. Oh, yes. The punch card reader. To feed the software into the mainframe. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Do it again.
Oh, ice fall. And more holes. See there? Next room, we're finding this, which seems to be some kind of graphite. I'm not sure if it is uh, something <laughs> special graphite. or merely for the use in a pen. No idea. Ferrets. It was control room. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's where you would have the computer console in it. Just too bad not a lot of it is left. I bet it looked like a spaceship at the time. This used to be the control room. Sadly, not as spectacular as it could have been. Strong wind all of a sudden. This is a cool view, actually. That's the back of the control room and how the guys saw their antenna at the time. It was some part of this big monitor. Yeah. Cool. Also used in the control rooms of the reactors. We shall look at that later. There's another piece of such monitor. But sadly, apart from that, not much else to see. Top secret. Selection is Seems like these multiple computer rooms were actually connected through the floors, or at least some of them were. I suppose that's where all these holes were going, but not 100% sure how it all worked out. Fuck. Yeah, here too. Yeah, ice on the floor and holes. It's almost like inside a pyramid. Lots of dangerous obstacles. Wires with small oh, rings, yes. ferret rings. Each ring one bit. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> this room is mostly empty again, as you can see. That used to be some kind of computer racks. All of those things. And now there's just some lamps and well, over there, seems like they left a lot of memory, for some reason. Guess it wasn't valuable enough or something. Electromagnetic, electrostatic shield, copper. Still. Iron room. Is there? Mm -hmm. Ceiling. Everything. Everything is made out of iron. Lots of circuit boards with a passive cooling. But apart from that, empty. Everything is empty. 
So let's go get some lovely sunshine on the roof. Can be an annoyance to have a tripod in one hand and a camera in the other hand. These roof tiles were a little too mobile for my liking. But anyway, nice view. So this is the roof of the control room building basically with the computers and on the other side you'd have the Duga array, the two antenna pieces, one 160 meters height, the other one about 90 meters. Just a little view of that roof and onto the antenna. But if you'd go a little further on that roof, preferably without stumbling, then you would get a much nicer view again. Look at all these trees growing on that roof. It's quite amazing how nature just claims everything. So let's get one last good view of that lovely Duga 3 antenna array. But as we're moving on, the zone has a little surprise again. The Chevalsky horses. If you look closely, you can see there are two much smaller horses amongst those. So probably that's the offspring from last year. That's cool. Bye, horse. It looks like the other two are still going. Oh, where are my What's friends? Happened? Oh, shit. <laughs> What's happened? <laughs> Quite an impressive and healthy looking stallion. <laughs> 